came. Um, it, I mean, just to give a bit of a summary, it's, it's, it's a film that's, that is very attached to the perspective of one woman, a young woman who is kind of coming back to Budapest where she originally grew up and her family had a department store style hat store, just very luxurious. Um, so she's at once an outsider, but also a bit of an insider. So it's kind of an interesting situation. Um, I mean, how did you choose that as, as you know, your, your, your entry point into this world? You know, what was important to you about, about that moment and, and that particular perspective? Well, I guess uh, outsider, insider, I, oh, I can relate to that. I, I feel very, very close to, uh, in my personal history, to, uh, um, to that position, which is, you know, being a little bit of foreigner in, their, you know, in his own land. Uh, I, had, um, I had a grandmother who, uh, who was my link when I, w when I, when I was ad adolescent to, to, the, to the 20th century. And uh, she told me stories about, uh, well, she, I guess she had to endure the, uh, the entire uh, uh, century and the, the hardships of the century uh, of that region of those times in her you know in her in her life in her uh, in her body in a way in her soul uh, so I guess I, I was very interested in those you know in those stories and and it was a very limited point of view and I guess that the fact that it was uh, the, the point of view of someone who didn't have much um, you know a lot of possibilities she had you know possibilities to choose but th most of the time it was between bad you know bad op a bad option another bad option mm -hmm. and i guess that was the the 20th century uh for uh, a lot of people in central europe and i guess that I, that 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 was very appealing for me and very interesting mm -hmm. and 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 that's how I, you know, in retrospect, I, I'm not. I didn't an analyze it before, but in retrospect, mm -hmm. I tried to understand why I was so interested in the yeah. in these times. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a it's a very it's kind of an ambitious subject to pick, uh, you know, a city just on that moment. Um, and and uh, you know, you have to say that Son of Soul was also a very ambitious start. I mean, what what do you think? Just looking back at, at that, you know, <laughs> beginning with Son of Souls as a first feature. Um, how how did you feel? You know the, the the kind of courage to take that step as your very first um, picture. Y you're talking about Son of Soul being the first feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I felt the the urge to to do it, although I had Sunset in me before Son of Soul, so these were parallel in a way. Um, but um, I I guess I I wanted to. G g you know, also f through f family stories, just the, s the Holocaust was so present, and and I guess a sense of history was very present in my life uh, as a kid already. Mm. So I guess that uh, that sense of history, or how you know how history is not only just you know something remote, but something that's very much in the very you know texture of events or very you know in the very um uh in the here and now that's that's something that i guess was very important for me and i i, I wanted to i also wanted to um you know re react in a way to what i felt as a sort of um you know mis misperception or misrepresentation mm -hmm. of, of of well but broadly, history—that's also some, something that Sunset says. But in *Son of Saul*, of the of the concentration camp and the Holocaust, mm -hmm. yeah, something that's always, and it was communicated by cinema in a very, uh, you know, very sharp way. Something always along the paradigm of the surviving, mm -hmm. uh, the surviving, and not uh, never the dead in a way. You know, dead. Oh, people die, but that's collateral. 
uh, what uh, so I, I was always interested in in the in the rule. The rule was death and not and not survival. And I guess I we were here with Geza three years ago, oh, yeah, uh, and yeah, we talked right. about that. That's right. Yeah. And to what extent uh, um, the the paradigm of survival this defined. Uh, the post-work uh, conception of the Holocaust and also artistic representation. Mm. And I think it also, it was something done to reassure ourselves as mm -hmm. a civilization of the post-war period to, to say that, uh, um, you know, bad things happen, but now we have to move on. But we, I, I was very much... Uh, you know, it, I, rebel, re, I, I, I think it was a rebellion against that the conception and the fact that, you know, when you c go and see Holocaust movies, you most of the time it's 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 not only the survival, it's also about, uh, you know, the, the point of view of um, of God or a point of view of, of, of wor in wor worst cases, the point of view of of the of the uh, perpetrators. You know, when you s when you analyze those films, you right. see, oh, we, we have a general view of the camp. I mean, what what kind of point of view can it be? Is it a bird or is it a, like a guard uh, look overlooking uh, the prisoners? This kind of you know jumping around with you know with the, the angles of vision in the camp is extremely problematic morally, I think, mm -hmm. and it definitely not does not say anything about the human suffering inside. Mm -hmm. And I think if we don't understand the human suffering and we cannot you know with, with the audiences uh, through the audiences communicate or understand make understand the suffering uh, there's no possibility to uh, to really have a relation to to events like that and yeah. to our own history and to ourselves so it's I, yeah. I guess both of the films are about relationship to ourselves yeah, a relationship to ourselves and and to history. I mean, it's interesting because you're 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 trying to change or trying to you know change the way we view history, but by adopting um, not a naive viewpoint, but definitely a, a more realistically kind of constrained viewpoint. So it's it's an interesting approach. I mean, it's it's almost something you see more in in, in literature, you know, where someone's writing from a very naive perspective or something. I, I don't know why why you call it naive. Maybe yeah, I'm well, not, I mean, I'm, I'm I mean not thinking it as a no, not naive like as um, a ignorant criticism, but, but just, just in a, in a strict sense of like the uh, voice, you know, um, uh, just I would say constrained and subjective, basically. But yeah, yeah, I, I maybe, maybe it's yeah. may archaic or primitive or very restrained. The thing is that, uh, and I'm not against naive. It just yeah struck me as an yeah. interesting idea i don't never thought about it uh the thing is that i really believe that uh, and 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 i am a little bit of a rebel i guess i don't want to yeah. say that as a sort of you know brand but i i really believe that you know as filmmakers we have to uh we have to question what what their representations and representational strategies are yeah. uh special in cinema and i am very much appalled at the you know the, the the way period films are usually built up and the way they are you know stories are told and and you know i'm i'm i'm, I'm just saying it's always the same it's always the same why right. is it always uh, or more and more like um like a sports game you know the, the camera being always right. at the right time in the right place yeah. Yeah. why is it uh, a sub sort of s objective uh, mm -hmm. point of view and uh, i'm not saying all the time but yeah, yeah. it's very very defining and yeah. more and more with the advent of well let's say the the um uh, the, the the sort of uh, the the power that uh, television and and internet have achieved uh, having over uh, cinema uh, the whole nar narration uh, of um, the narration strategy uh, in a way has become extremely standardized mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's something that we never point out and I, I really want to when y if, if you would you know if we we, we watched uh, yeah. Uh, not not the excerpts from my movie, but ex mm -hmm. uh, you know extracts from 
movies that are so-called period films, I, I would definitely point out what kind of, uh, you know, uh, what kind of strategies uh, are uh, there and, and they, are, they repeat themselves. They never, um, they never uh, let anything to the audience, never, mm -hmm. never uh, rely on the imagination of the viewer and never... Uh, uh, question the the um, the sort of uh, uh, dogma of of representation of events, and I think that's something that that we we end up with with audiences less and less questioning the way films are made. Yeah. In a way, fifty years ago, people were more uh, aware of that, and I, I yeah. think there's a clear regression, mm -hmm. a clear regression in that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, um, the, the what's interesting is is that when you, when you resist the omniscient view, you know, you uh, you actually maybe learn more about the actual workings of, of history because there's a lot of mystery mm -hmm. in how mm -hmm. things happen. It's not mm -hmm. it's not always a clear cause and effect. Mm -hmm. That's an order that we put on later. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, you mean you mean if yeah. if a film that takes place in history. Mm -hmm. Uh, adopts a sort of omniscient view, then mm. it allows a sort of uh, very clear path to the understanding of the c circumstances it of 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 the film. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it pretends to give you a clear yeah, path, yeah. but yeah. it doesn't. It's not necessarily. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. in in a way, it's also because we are more yeah. and more interested in uh, the the social political approach to mm. uh, to one given period. Yeah. And I think that's also something that that was reduced in a way, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not about the atmosphere or the the resonances yeah. of, of a given period, but more about. I, I'm not. I'm not saying it's bad to have a political historical film. It's just. I'm just saying it's. It's. There's a sort of also standardization in the in yeah. that regard. Yeah. Definitely. Um, now, I mean. One, one of, uh, along these lines, what's, what's distinctive about both your films is the way you use the camera um, and the sound design. Um, and, I mean, you have a very mobile, handheld camera work where the backgrounds are often left kind of a blurry or... Oh, geez, yeah. are you going <laughs> to... We I'm don't want you to die. It's supposed <laughs> to be a director's chair. It's <laughs> Um, we can switch. It was that no, I'm always like that, I'm moving all the time. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, um, yeah, I mean, you have a very mobile uh, camera, and this is a handheld camera you have in Sunset. Um, and how did you how did you create your like technique? Um, what, Actually, what it reminds me of the shoot. You know, that's why oh, really? it makes me unco uncomfortable. <laughs> you know, the shoot, We're trying to they have these kind of things, and yeah. oh my God, what is going to be? <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> you know? Where am I heading now? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, we're talking about camera movements. Camera movements. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you have to get up and move around. Yeah. We, can, we can circulate in the crowd. We actually wanted for this film to be to not to be. Not to do, not to do that. We wanted to move away from handheld. We wanted to do okay. this film to be a dolly dolly film or a more uh -huh. like a um, uh, very fluid film. But we couldn't couldn't make it because because the way we intended to d to p to be present, you know, the, the camera always mm -hmm. very. I mean, the the point of view being very present to the yeah uh, very close to the main character. We could not achieve that. Yeah, yeah. And that that's why we had to switch back to a handheld, okay. and we also wanted the widescreen on a, a, anamorphic, and it just turned out that we are not, we didn't like the format for the movie. It yeah. it seemed too wide, too, too epic in the wrong sense. Although I love epic, it's just that it just didn't fit. Yeah, I mean, for one thing, if you had, d you know, dollying shots, you'd have to have all these tracks all over the place and constantly... Well, yeah, that's right. the thing. We have yeah. some of those, uh, but even even if it's a, uh, you know, it's a crane shot, the operator is sitting on a, mm -hmm. you know, on a platform and is, is the camera still in a way handheld. So the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, um, the I, I think we, I wanted to be very close to the main character and, mm -hmm. and for that, the, the, unfortunately, Dolly's 
or when when it's in and out d on different you know surfaces you cannot really achieve that mm -hmm. uh, so that that was a technical yeah. technical issue uh, you know having uh, you know consequences yeah. on, on in the apparatus uh, or or the the uh, the outcome of yeah yeah and i mean what's what was the origin of this camera technique for you uh, i mean were you were you looking at um you know documentary verite you know like i don't know you know pennebaker moving around or were you looking at uh you know um, miklos yangso moving with his tracking shots and think you know giving you a in media res look at history like when you were first, you know, putting this technique together, what were your origins? I, I don't like handheld camera. I, mm -hmm. I have to say, um, <laughs> although I made two films with <laughs> entirely handheld cameras. Um, <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> the thing is, I really like what what we what we really strive to do is with uh, the DOP and the camera operators to really have the the the, the, the shots as as steady as possible mm -hmm. when you know it to the, 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 the handheld camera has been around in a very fashionable way for a few decades uh in in mainstream cinema mm -hmm. but they also have to have this urge to move it right you know, like shake the it. Sh you know tremble, it's real. Yeah. the trembling effect you know the make make it tremble you know like make it very the urgency should be there. Uh, you should feel the cameraman like yeah, shaking. Yeah, like shaking or yeah, having yeah. some nervous uh, <laughs> issues. Um, neurological, I would say. Um, <laughs> but uh, I w I'm definitely against it. We, 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 we actually went to, um, to see Garrett Brown, who was the inventor of the Steadicam, and I was so interested in having a Steadicam. In, but I don't like the floating effect of the Steadicam. So I said to Garrett Brown, well, uh, how do you achieve the you know a sort of st stiff effect and steady cam because we and, sh and i showed him come and see by alan klimov oh, wow. which is a sort of very it's a, a sort of handmade steady cam and and it's it has this stiffness to it and he said there's no way or, i mean does he didn't see any possibilities to to do that anymore uh, it's not possible he said so we should we should not it's not steady cam and I, so i was stuck i was i was as i said to myself okay there's no and to this dop there's no if we want to have something mobile and and very um you know moving with the main character sort of almost like a, a someone accompanying the main character then we have to have uh, a handheld but that with an operator design that doesn't have neurological issues. <laughs> so you need a very steady hand. You don't yeah, need I steady think cam, that's steady that's what yeah. we, we, we wanted to yeah. really with yeah. a steady, uh, steady handed uh, handheld. Okay. <laughs> um, well, this is probably a good moment to maybe show show a clip. Sure. Um, so if we could show a clip from Sunset. It's one of the most uh, um, <laughs> classical. Uh, let's say uh, part of the of the movie. Yeah, so that's that's a scene where <coughs> Iris, um, the main character, has uh, is finally getting to talk to the current owner of of the hat store. Um, could could you talk a bit about the the staging of that scene? It's it's really elegantly choreographed when you're following her point of view and she picks up a photo and then you hold the camera and in the background, um, Vlad Ivanov usually known as the villain in Romanian <laughs> films, um, it appears behind. So it's, it's, it's very uh, perfectly choreographed. Well, it's, uh, um, it, it is the first time that she comes in, the, in, the, in this place, which is the, the hat store and the apartment of the, her parents, and someone else is here. So the, the, um, I always approach this film as almost like a tale, you know, uh, the 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 young girl uh coming through the you know uh, uh um the, the the younger in the forest in a way and and and, the, and 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 this kingdom is now ruled by someone else and you know what she then then before so uh it, it is actually we we try to keep it very very low key and very um 
very simple just really keep the importance of faces you know as much as possible uh and also keep the fact that there's a there's a distance if they always keep the, the 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 distance the logics of distance so if we we are with her and so the, uh, he is at a certain distance and respect that you know, and never try to cheat that. That's something also that really, most of the time in films, we cheat. We go out for the for the close up when there's no way the close up is should be there. Right. Yeah. And th and then I I, uh, uh, I well the, the scene didn't go you know further, but then we actually earned the close up of 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 the, of, of the guy uh, Mr. Brill. When once it's you know it becomes significant you know uh, and um, and also we we actually it it was one of the closest close up on on Iris and one of our f you know uh, it's 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 very tight on her and we really wanted to have this sort of uh, very very very. Um, we have this very strong the, her very strong presence should be uh, should be on screen uh, and not uh, you know so that that was very important to, to have this closeness yeah I mean the, the, it seems so close it's one of the moments where we get closest to her private space in a way you know it's it just her pri private thoughts in a way yeah and also yeah. she is she seems to be very fragile and very innocent and that's something that's be that's w that will be questioned th questioned throughout the film yeah. uh, and that's that's something that really interested me in having yeah. this uh, uh you know very very simple frail representation of the main character at the beginning yeah yeah uh, could could you talk about how how you found or chose this cast this actress uh, Yuli Lak? Uh, she was in Son of Soul. Uh, she was uh, I knew her from before. Um, I guess in Hungary everybody knows everybody, so that's <laughs> not even you know, it's like a village. But um, uh, so but we have an extent we had an extensive casting process. We didn't we, we even had a. a you know, it w to sp we spent like a year on that. We we w did, you know we we looked at many many people, and we just ended up with with someone who was in Son of Soul. But I I I, I gave, you know, I gave myself the possibility of not taking her. But at the end, it just became evident that she had this strange vibration in herself that are beyond beyond her control. And there is a secret that's beyond her in a way. That's also there's also something ominous in the in the fra frailty and fragility of her character. The, and these are genuine things, and then it's not separable from her character. So I guess that was very important. So yeah. to to choose someone who was already in a way unsettling, and and ominous in her uh, in her innocence. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a couple moments later in the movie where, yeah, I don't want to give it away for anyone who's seen it, but you kind of wonder about about her her background, her what she's capable of. Um, exactly. Yeah, uh, you just mentioned that uh, Hungary is kind of a small world uh, in terms of knowing people. I, I'm, I'm I just want to jump back a bit in your biography. I guess you you studied a bit with uh, with Bellatar, right, or worked a bit with him. I I, wor I was his assistant for yeah. a few years. Uh, on the man from London, uh -huh, uh -huh. And with Tilda uh, Swinton, that's the one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and it was uh, f for my film school, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And and did you feel a need when you were, you know, coming up with your own approach, your own style, to kind of like really forge your own path, uh, or or yeah? Uh, well, it's it's half conscious, but I think. Uh, what I wanted really is to find my own voice, and for that I needed time. You know, I sometimes people are pushed to to make their films very early on, and I and and sometimes they have this push in themselves to to make the film very early on, and I think that might be uh, a problem. Yeah. That might be also, um, uh, you know, if you don't give yourself enough time 
to to have a, a thinking process and and really understand what it means to make a film and the responsibilities of making a film what if you, that you need thoughts not only ideas you need thoughts if you don't have thoughts you only have ideas you're you're in, you're in a, a, i think you're in danger and i think that's something that's uh, that i in in a very conscious way the way i read you know about films filmmakers about you know how to establish a scene how to how to you know film analysis or or um, or books like that or, uh, on film history and i uh, although i didn't read everything by far from it i at least i tried to find a way to what uh, what i liked what you know talked to me what what was what were what was important and i think that's in in in, in the in the path of filmmaker of uh, a starting filmmaker that's very important to find first of all uh, a process to find thoughts mm -hmm. and and I, th i i i know it seems very obvious <laughs> but it's not because <laughs> i have to say most of the films do not have thoughts and uh, <laughs> and also the maybe find a master which is very mm -hmm. i mean i would always tell uh, an aspiring filmmaker to go to f to to work with someone who they respect mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they could uh, learn from from them and i and i'm sure uh, that's something that there's the idea of a transmission mm -hmm. that you're not alone you're not that i know that's what film schools tell you tell you today it's mm -hmm. that you're film history has started with you and will end with you but i think it's a, an incredible lie and it's 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 also yeah. very narcissistic and it creates narcissism and it creates films that are centered around the filmmaker whereas i think films are bigger than the makers of of and i think films tend to you know grow beyond yeah the possibilities and right. the realm of one filmmaker. Hmm. Um, and I mean, in terms of transmission, I, I, do, you, do you feel a, a kind of lineage with, with, uh, with, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, but yeah. with Miklos Yangso at all? Or, uh, um, because you both have a very specific, very um, deep interest in mm -hmm. history and how to portray that. And then he also uses kind of um, tracking shots and sometimes it's a bit enigmatic what's going on I don't know. yeah it's very um, he's, he was a great master of Hungarian cinema and world cinema I guess you know uh, uh, the roundup that's called in English yeah. it's I, th I think one of the Hungarian film Hungarian films that really made a great impression on me and you couldn't feel the sort of uh, ideological drive that w you could you can feel in other films of his and I, 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 that was really good to to have this this sense of liberty mm -hmm. uh, that he had, and I think he was very inventive, and he knew how to use craft and how to use his crew in, in his actors in a very clever way. But he was very, you know, it's very dominating in a way. It's uh -huh. good. Yeah. It's it's you know it's very very f forceful, and and uh, he knows exactly. You know, he he doesn't try to you know he sticks to his plan mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess yeah there's a tradition I guess in Hungarian cinema I don't know if I'm part of, part of it but I I was very in interested in also what Bela did in mm -hmm. in in most of his films this the, the, what he calls the process you know what yeah. he when you go into the very the details and the the here and now so of his main characters how to share space and time with the main characters something that's very interesting and i i think uh, you know uh, uh, a lot of films from mexicans mexican directors and i really think that cuaron and and um, in Aritu, i really think that they they took interesting things from yoncho Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a big influence on a lot of people. I, yeah, yeah, I think it yeah. made a lot of impression. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, the red and the white, another another Yangshou film th that takes place a few years after sunset. In a, right. Uh, I think it does right. Does uh, it? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. with uh, yeah, yeah. The end of the 1910s. Yes. yes yeah, yes. But uh, that that that's a great film. It, it I feel it just it, the the presence of the. 
the party a little bit too much. Oh. In the film. <laughs> <laughs> the presence of the party, that's kind of been a, a specter for, for, for some of your life, right? Because you grew up partly. Yes. I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I remember <laughs> I grew up in, uh, I was still, uh, you know, uh, I was in, in school when I, in the 80s. And I remember the, mm. the things uh -huh. that were not so good. Yeah. And, and, and my, my parents were very against the system. So I also have a sort of... Uh, uh this uh this strong background in me you know uh mm -hmm. you cannot you have i mean there's a very strong anti totalitarian you know uh feeling in me i guess yeah, and yeah. and and i cannot uh, i cannot uh, obviously forget uh, what uh, what hungary went through uh f during 40 yeah. years of communism yeah. And and, the, and 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 what it did yeah. that we can feel until today. Yeah, uh, I, th I think everyone should have a healthy anti-totalitarian feeling. It's a good. This is a good. Yeah, mo that's the it's thing. Good model. If, if you're anti, <laughs> uh, if you're anti-Nazi, I mean, you should be anti-communist. I mean, there's no rule about. It. There's no. Mm -hmm. There's no way around it. Mm -hmm. There's no way around it. And the other way around either. So. Yeah. And for sunset, uh, I mean, it's interesting to think about uh, that setting because. It's, you know, it's before World War I, and it's, you know, also before, you know, so Soviet, uh, you know, d rule, domination. And so when you look back at that time period in this film, are you looking at that time period with a, a kind of regret or a kind of just a wonder about what happened? Um, I, I, I'm both, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I am, um, when, when I walk today in Budapest, I can see the ruins of a, of, of a civilization that was destroyed very clearly. And it's still being destroyed. You know, in the last 20 years, it was even more destroyed than during the 40 bef the years before. Uh, it's devastating. And I was really, you know, I'm very interested in how cities are made and I, I guess um, urban landscapes. And, uh, and you can feel the, you can feel people you know, the people who were built these cities and, and Budapest was a city full of full of promise at the end of at the at the at the, at the turn of the century and incredible sophistication, incredible um, uh, mixture of cultures and and, and languages and uh, and, uh, you know, you couldn't go through uh, a street, be, you know, without hearing German and Yiddish and 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 Polish and uh, Serbian and Hungarian, so it's 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 crazy. It was it was a very um, very strong, in a way, it was a, a, a sort of Europe that was destroyed. Mm -hmm. It's an idea of a Europe that was destroyed that we we unfortunately we will never have because, you know, with with. The with the first and second world war and the redistribution and re um uh, how do you say that re um reshaping of of yeah. of, 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 of of the, the frontiers maps. and the maps and and populations be you know everybody you know should be you know all the all the nations should be should be alone in a way should all you know they they should be ethnically clean right. and that's i'm um, sorry no no i mean it's true uh, everything gets isolated yeah ethnically yeah. isolated in yeah. a way so it's yeah. very it's a, it's it's a sort of um, um uh regressed regressive uh version uh, a destroyed version of an idea of europe that was actually existed before first world war and that's what we lost and i i am uh, in this in this respect i am very uh, yeah. full of um, fu uh, full of nostalgia i guess uh, to 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 the spirit yeah. uh, and I, I and there's a mystery to what happened and to what extent in in the heart of civilization there is a, a need a desire to 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 undo itself to 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 commit suicide and that's what something that I I feel more and more on a pr on a personal level in my reflections to what happens in 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 the history of mankind mm. this sort of idea of a pro of a straight progress doesn't make uh, always sense to me and I I feel that it's it's a sort of cyclical cyclical uh, movement and um and yeah so that's i guess yeah. these are these are th 
thoughts that are in the film. Yeah, I mean, that's it's very obviously very interesting watching this film now when there, the world feels in a state of uncertainty and shifts in governments and that sort of thing and, and ideologies. Um, I want to make sure the audience has, has a chance to ask some questions. Um, there's a lot to chew over here. Well, I think you, uh, it's its the school of Belatar. When you put effort in a movie, you always feel it in a way or another. That's something that uh, that comes out in, in, in uh, unconsciously, I think, in uh, the way it is shared with the, the audience. Well, I have to say we, we, uh, we built uh, inside of a city uh, on a vacant lot the, uh, the hat store itself. And that hat store uh, and the sides of the uh, of this little square that was in the mid in front of the hat store, I think that's the that was the main set and the main uh, um, uh, for a big budget movie it wouldn't be a big deal, but for us it definitely was and and uh, it uh, you know it it created a sort of uh, blending into the very environment of the. Of the of the of the hat store that we uh, w were looking for, and um, well, you can't always go to the with that kind of budget. You can't always go to the to to, um, to all the refinement that you really really want. Unfortunately, because it just becomes too complicated. But we definitely wanted to cr to to create. Uh, uh, a very a very fine um, world to reflect um, to 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 show this um, this incredible this sumptuous um, uh, world uh, the world of uh, a world of illusions let's put it that way um, another question and I'm glad you mentioned thirty five obviously yeah. Yeah. it is it it is on thirty five it, it is and and then I read in the press notes that the final sequence is actually is it shot on different yeah. stock. Uh, yeah, the final sequence is on sixty-five millimeter. Although th the the funny thing is wh when you shoot on sixty-five and you go f through a computer to downgrade it to thir thirty-five, the difference is not that visible. I always prefer an optical solution to that because I really think that the optical things are are much more powerful. Uh, but in in the name of regression I of the pseudo uh, digital revolution, you don't do that or almost don't do that anymore. Uh, uh, and I really think that we're we're um, these are this is the strength of cinema. You know, the, the, the this this physical chemical side of cinema. This is something that that should be the defense of cinema against. Uh, uh, you know, television and internet, the way they are, they operate, and it seems that nobody else uh, says that, or om almost nobody else says that. So we we talked about it. We did, it? yeah. Chris Nolan yeah, says that. You gotta hang out with Chris Nolan. Um, I saw a hand go up over there. Yeah, I, I have this, well, uh, maybe it's not my role to say that, but where are the <laughs> film critics who say that? So I wonder. Now. Um, the I thing is that... I, I, I give you permission. What? I give you permission as a film critic. <laughs> okay, for this time, but then you, you know, someone has to take over. Uh, I really believe that uh, uh, we don't even see it. We don't even see the signs of it, but the films are more and more about subjects. And not, you know, and not about thoughts, and not about human experience. Human experience is fine if it's a social experience, but it's not the only way human experience should be defined. Uh, when you go into commission in Europe to uh, what kind of projects are uh, are um, uh, supported, or I guess when you go to festival commissions what kind of films they want to show or w when you go to juries in festivals what kind of films are going to get the awards or you go to uh, film critiques and you see what kind of films get you know the most praises I have 
I cannot help but see the tendency to more and more to to to, to see subjects. You know, we're talking about subjects and not films, uh, or not. You know, it has to be a subject. You know, and I, I uh, you know, and it starts with the commissions or or the financiers, and. Um, and I'm not a film historian, but I, I, I feel that more and more we're detaching ourselves from, from any other perception of human rea reality uh, than the social economical perception, you know. Sort of, we have to give, you know, all, all, the, so all, all, the, all the groups that exist in, in, in the world a voice. In a way, these are you, 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 you please all the, all the groups, or you. I think you think you've pleased all the groups, but in f in, in in the process, you 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 really lose um, the heart of human experience, because it's not not only about money, you know, the human experience, it's not only about hardships, it's not only about that. It is, there's something else. There's so, so I think there are more metaphysical things, more you know, uh, and 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 there's a there's I think there's a very strong tendency to, to um, to approach it that way. And then when it comes to filmmaking, you can see that films more and more. I've been to a few juries, so I can tell you that, but mm, I cannot generalize, but that's that's what my feeling is a subjective feeling, but it's a feeling uh, based on many films that I've seen uh, that that films are made in a way that uh, they build up uh, a construct. They are a construct of of some kind of you know some kind of discourse. I feel more and more. It's sometimes it's misery cinema, sometimes it's I don't know what. It's uh, when we go back to history, it's we have to give all the important historical facts as if we wanted to guide through the audience some kind of very important uh, postcard effect of uh, all this happened here in Sarajevo. Uh, the Archduke was killed in 1914, and then the guy comes running. The Archduke is killed. <laughs> so, and then what's we gonna what we gonna do? Or right. or Poland <laughs> is invaded. Oh my God! I mean, this is not how things happen in life. Uh, yeah. This is how we think things happen in life. And I, what what I think is cinema. The f people who make cinema, and the people who make cinema, and more and more are vomited f from film schools all over the world and uh, I was there and 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 the way and the way they are predisposed to approach to you know censor themselves to 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 you know format themselves to talk about issues that are extremely reduced redu uh, you know as opposed to the, you know human experience uh, what can i say in an italian uh, um, I don't know. Italian filmmakers from the '60s certainly were in the in the social world, but at the same time, they were they were reaching beyond that. Even if you were, you know, reaching, you know, for the for the social economic, even if you're talking about money, you, you know, I don't know, just nice yeah. of Kabiria that I really like. Uh -huh. You know, you certainly talk about money, but in a way, you talk about something that goes far beyond that. In a way, we are reducing ourselves and formatting ourselves and formatting the way we, 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 we communicate with the audience in a way that's that's about um, facts and 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 a sort of you know uh, a sort of uh, begging for compassion and and uh, and I don't think it's true and I don't think it's real. I don't think it's honest. I think it's it's about uh, it's about what we want people to think that we as filmmakers want to want to achieve. Mm -hmm. And 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 I, in the sense, I re see re the the fact that f film s uh, schools are are made that way. The way they are not transmitting and not open to thoughts, but to uh, something else mm -hmm. 
uh, I find it really, really uh, appalling. Yeah. Um, but I could go on for hours, but I will <laughs> not. I will not. Well, uh, this, this kind of reminds me of another question uh, I wanted to ask. Um, I mean, w when you won the Academy Award, when, when Son of Soul won the Academy Award, uh, what, what sort of offers did you get for projects where you offered you know, specific projects? Just, just one. I don't know. <laughs> just uh, tell us one. Uh, Second World War. Uh, to read, I don't know, films and, you know, Eichmann. Um, like a biopic uh, or something? Or? Bi uh, no, some well, Nazi films. Um, Jews, uh, um, Nazis, <laughs> and so on. Uh, so the thing is that um, very reduced, you know. Right. I mean, not 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 that I, uh, but you know, yeah. I, I I don't want to be that, you know, P pigeonholed. You yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. want to do that. Yeah, of course. Um, I think uh, it doesn't mean that I'm not interested in the Second World War. It just that, you know, yeah. I mean, it's interesting because you're 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 as a filmmaker, you're very aware of ideology. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I I am very very aware and very. Uh, I can feel ideology because it's it's a dogmatic thing and it's coming always coming back and it's very present, you know, from all sides, from the left and from the right and. It's very, very present, and uh, I, I don't. I, I, it's re it's really hard to make, f good, you know, f good films that are f political films, I guess. And what would what does one call political film, in a way? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess it's not only about films about the elections, or no, it's uh, uh, I issue issue driven film or uh, uh, no, but he, he was more justice. specific. It's, it, it's about you know, talking about justice in in the world. But mm -hmm. um, I think you you have to. I I, I I I think if you don't have a metaphysical layer to your film, uh, then it's it's it can be if you it can be it can go on CNN. I mean, just it's. That's different. It's journalism, or 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 engaged journalism, which is also a problematic for me because I think journalism should not be engaged. Uh, um, but I I think our our you know we have a responsibility to the viewer. My our my responsibility to the viewer is not my responsibility to tell him what to do and what tell him. Uh, that this and that, or you know, I don't know, to give 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 a recipe. My my responsibility is to take the, is, is is take the viewer on a journey and and try to make them think and feel, and and know exactly where it can lead lead them. So that's that is responsibility. And if this is not, I guess, if this is not. Uh, in the reflection of a filmmaker, uh, if things are done for you're know, just to please festivals, and more and more that's the case, uh, then we're we're in a bad place as filmmakers and and as a society too, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it's also it's also about. The freedom of of the f of of the filmmakers right. to yeah. what extent they are free, because they n I, I I think they're in in a world of freedom where everything can be expressed. Um, then they're not free in a way. I think I really believe in the limitations that we can put ourselves um, in into the work that will make us you know that will make we try to push our off the boundaries, we try to, we try to struggle with the material, but we don't, you know, that's, that's the process, and then, you know, 
Well, it might be yeah. I have become more too abstract. So no. <laughs> well, I mean, it sounds like you want a, f a freedom of not just what you're talking about, but how you're talking about it and how people think and view it. So, and that that's comes out, I think, in both these films. That you don't want people to be comfortable about how they're seeing what they're seeing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, sometimes it scares when I do these films, especially Sunset, to, with too much freedom for the for the viewer you know of interpretation that's something that scares them because they don't want to be free you know in their interpretation they come to me and ask for a manual and it's no disrespect because i can i they grew up on films that you know they always give them th all, you know the all the limits of the path that they are going through you know the path is very well defined and that's also something that i have um, we talked about, you know, the, the, this 50 years ago, it would have been right. more, yeah. you know, the audience would have been more accepting of a narrative. I'm not talking about like experimental cinema. I'm talking about narrative cinema of the, of the, of the freedom that the, the filmmaker, the filmmakers is, is, is taking. And it's not a freedom of being, you know, shocking, you know, it's not the freedom of it's easy to shock, you know, it's easy to shock with more violence, more sex, and more. This is not the freedom I'm talking about. That's, that's pseudo freedom. You know, it's, it's about, an, you know, p questioning the grammar of cinema, how you, t how you, how you communicate with the audience mm. and what kind of relationship you have with the audience and what kind of relationship the audience with the, with the, with the, with the, with the character, with the characters. Well, that seems like a good point. Russ, okay, I, 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 everybody's <laughs> asleep now or, <laughs> or something else. And I almost fell off the chair as well. Um, so it's a good moment to conclude before anyone hurts themselves. Um, but, Laszlo, thank you so much for a wonderful discussion. Thank you. Thanks.